you now can create automatically dated pages by clicking on the duplicate button down here below and it will automatically add you a new page and also change all the dates on the planner for you. So you see every time I click on this lower button, duplicate plus change button here, it will automatically add a new page and also change the dates. And besides that, it will also change the calendar for you. So every time you hit a new month or you start a new month, like for example, now the next page will be April 3rd. You see that it also changed the calendar from March to April. So on page 11, it still was in March. Now on the 12th page, it changed it to April. You can start from any week of the year and create as many data pages as you want. The only thing you always have to remember is whenever you're creating multiple pages, you will always have to have a cover page on the very first page of your planner. And then on the second page, that is where you would start um, your dated pages. So right here in this example, um, I have a cover on the very first page. So this used to be a February planner. Then on the second one, I have a calendar. And then on the third page is where the weekly planner is starting. Um, you can do it the same way or you could leave out a calendar and then just start right away with the weekly pages. So it's all up to you. Um, how it works is that whenever you create or start a new weekly planner, you will have to add date flags to your daily boxes first. So let's maybe create a planner together. Um, let me open up one of our starter templates up here. When I click here, it will open up a page with a ton of different kinds of planners you can use as starter templates. So if I scroll all the way down here, here is where the weekly planner are listed. Now I will choose maybe, maybe this planner right here and then open it up in the create page. And now I have a new planner with just one page, which is this weekly planner. Now, before we start adding the date flags to the planner, remember that your very first page will always have to be a cover. So let's add a new page to create a cover. So here, click on this button right here, add page, and this will add you a blank page, which is the layout. Now next, you will have to create an empty layout. So go to layout and then adjust layout. And you want to remove all the boxes here on the template. You can click on them and then uh, manually remove all the boxes. Click somewhere on the right page um, to do the same. And now there is a text up here, a header, which we also need to be removed. So click on text, then H1, and then uh, left page, select it, and then here unselect the header like this. And now you have an empty template as your cover. So move this cover to the first position. You can click on this pink arrow and it will move it up like this. So now this is your cover. If you want, you can have the cover empty uh, with nothing on it. Or if you do want to have a cover decorated or you want to have some sort of a text on your cover, then you can go also to sticker then widgets and then you can also for example add a text sticker like this to your template and you can place it into the middle or give it a new name for example weekly 2023 like this you can also decorate it add patterns or something else to it and just remember that the right page is always the front cover so the left side of page two will be behind your front cover. So now that we have a cover and we have a weekly planner, let's add the date flags to the daily boxes. You can do that by selecting the widget. And then in the menu, you want to scroll all the way down uh, to the date menu. So there is a way to add a date to the top of the widget like this. When you click on the dated widget, you will have this menu here show up and then you can also adjust the size um, of this date. 
What you can do as well is you can also add it as a date flag. So here in the menu of date flag, click on top and then it will add you this date flag, which looks like this. You can also change the styling or the type of the date flag. And then you can also under size, you can also choose how high or how wide you want the date flag to be like this. And then you can also move it down here where it says from top, you can move it a bit down like this. And then you can also adjust it how far away you want it to be from the left side, maybe like this. Okay. And then next go to date and you want to choose the correct date for this um, weekly planner. So if you want your weekly planner to start in January, go to the January month and then select um, the first day. So I want it to start on Monday the 2nd. And what you can do from here is select the widget and then copy paste it into all the other date widgets. Let me quickly remove the word Monday in the header like this because we already have Monday written here in the date flag. Now I will click on copy up here to copy this widget. Then I will click on Tuesday and paste this widget in every um, daily box. This is just to save some time. And once this is done, we can click on the second day, which should be Tuesday and change it to Tuesday. Next one would be Wednesday 4th. On the other side, we have Wednesday, oh sorry, Thursday 5th, then we have 6th, 7th and 8th. Now what I will do next is I also want to add a monthly calendar into this planner. So I want it to be up here. So I'll select this box here and then go to monthly and add a calendar into it. Right now the header is not showing. So in the setting, let's select to show the header. And then in the menu up here, um, let's have it set to January 2023. Now, before I duplicate this page, I will have to let you know that we currently have an issue in our system. Um, when you now duplicate your page with the dates, you see that um, the third page won't have the dates correctly. And this is just a very small issue in our system, which we currently are fixing. So what you have to do is click on delete and then duplicate it again. And from here, it should be correct. So now I am on February 12th. I already have seven pages made and you can duplicate and keep adding pages as many as you want. You see, every time I click, there is a new page added with the dates changed and you see that the calendar is changing as well. Um, I do recommend to not exceed 20 pages. I mean, you can create 50 pages, but the more pages you create, the slower the program will become. So it's possible it might crash if you're using Chrome. If you do create many pages or 30 or 50 pages, I recommend you to use Firefox as your only browser since on Firefox, it's currently not crashing. So create as many pages as you want. And then like here, I have 30 pages. It's the size of 68 megabyte, which is quite big. But once you have your plan created, you can go to save export. And when you export the planner, you will click on export all pages, paper selected. And then you would choose on what kind of paper you're printing out your planner. So if you have US letter size paper at home in your printer, select US letter size. If you have A4 paper, select A4. But if you're based in the United States, most likely you have US letter size paper at home only. So select either size and then you want to select on rearrange the pages for the rings. 
Don't be confused about these two menus. Um, I just recommend you to always select rearrange for whatever planner you're creating. This will just make sure that um, your planner at the end will line up in the exact order like you have it here in the multiple page menu. And what the rearrange menu will do is it will also take your cover and then place it in the right position. So when you print out and cut out your planner, you can be sure that the cover is in front of your planner and the back cover is in the back of your planner. So select those two menus and then click on batch generate PDF to export your planner. And depending on how many pages you have, you might need to wait a bit longer. Right now I have 30 pages, so it probably will take me maybe 20 seconds to export the planner. But once it is exported, I'll show you how it will look like. It just finished generating the planner. Now here I can click on download PDF and this is how the planner will look like. So this planner is meant to be printed on US letter size. I created this planner in A5 size but since uh, two pages, two A5 pages uh, don't fit on US letter size paper. It detached both pages uh, to be printed uh, single like you see here. So one page on one sheet of paper. From here download this file to your computer and then from here you can open it up in Adobe Acrobat Reader and then click on print and what you want to select is you want to select to print all odd pages first and then have it on custom scale 100. You can also select actual size so both is correct. Orientation is auto and then you want to print all the odd pages first. So click on print. So it will print out page 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 and so on. And then once all the odd pages are printed out, you want to flip the paper, reinsert it into the printer and then print out all the even pages. So then you would select here to print all the even pages. And then it will print out um, page 0, page 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and so on. And that is how you print out your planner. If you have any questions, feel free to always message me on Instagram or Facebook and I will try to respond to your questions as quickly as I can. Bye!